Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Facial Plastics Friday. It's Dr. Brace here, and we're doing part two of our facial fillers. And by request last week, we're gonna talk about jawline filler. So I have our lovely Kate as my model today. And what I'm gonna talk about is how I approach jawline filler and what I'm looking at and sort of what kind of fillers we would use. So if you look at the mandibular line, that's the line here on the profile that shows the mandible. For most people, when you wanna do jawline fillers, you're trying to accentuate this line. And that means you're probably going to want to accentuate one of three places. The gonial angle is the angle of the jaw back here. The pre-jowl sulcus, where a lot of people get a little bit of, uh, with age, a little bit of a, a dent and like a little fold of skin. And then the chin. And so when you're doing a filler in these areas, there's two main ways to approach it. A periosteal injection, which means injecting down onto the bone, or a subcutaneous injection, just at the junction of the dermis and the fat. So my approach is usually using a large particle filler with a high G prime, so a filler that's very stiff and that's going to cause a lot of expansion. And I would go into the pre jowl sulcus here in front of the fold in the uh, deep part and do filler right down on the jawbone. The danger zone here is the facial artery and the sublingual artery. So, okay, can you clench your teeth? So if you get your patient to clench, you can mark the masseter muscle it's right there and the facial artery is just in front of it. So you can actually palpate it, find the pulse, and you can find out where it is. Because what you don't want to do is be too far back, go into the artery with a needle and fill it with filler, because that is supplying the cheeks, the lips, the nose, and you could end up with a vascular necrosis. So it's important to know your anatomy and to stay away from those danger zones. The sublingual artery is underneath here. I recently saw a talk at the American Academy of Facial Plastic Surgery meeting of someone who ended up with a sublingual artery embolism and ended up having a whole area of necrosis of their lower lip. So you have to be careful with these fillers, but if you know where the anatomy is, we know where the blood vessels are, it can be done safely. So the most common place for a jawline filler would be on the bone, so you're below the blood vessel in the pre-jowl sulcus. Kate doesn't have a pre-jowl sulcus, but it would be right there. <laughs> Um, in the chin, if somebody has a bit of a weak chin or a smaller chin, by putting filler in the chin, you will pull the chin forward and help delineate that line. And so I would use the same type of filler there, a, a stiff, large particle, high G prime filler to accentuate the chin. And then the last place would be the gonial angle. If you wanted to find the angle of the jaw there, this is really quite powerful to uh, make someone's jawline look nice and sharp. The problem with doing this is if you're too superficial and you're not on the bone, you can end up in the parotid gland, which is the salivary gland that lives here. And if you put it in the parotid gland, it can end up looking like a parotid tumor or like mumps. And so if you look online on Instagram or if you know anyone that's had it done, it looks funny and it looks like a big lump that moves when they're chewing. It's because it was too superficial and it's in the gland itself. So for all three of these injections, you want to be deep down onto the bone and then their little depots, their little um, aliquots of filler that you put in, take the needle out and massage it until you get to the desired endpoint. So that would be the primary way I would do jawline filler. And after you've done that, if you want to get more accentuation, this is where I would use a cannula. And this is where you'd be just at the junction of the dermis and the subcutaneous fat. Often, we are just wanting to delineate this and make it a little sharper. And so using a cannula, you can go in again with a high G prime filler, but probably not something like lift. Um, something more like uh, in the wrestling family, I would use uh, Define uh, in the Jupiter, or sorry, in the um, Galderma. Galderma, I said Galderma, in the Revenest line, oh, right. I would use something like Contour. And with the um, cannula, you can do a little thread of filler on a retrograde injection, and you can put the filler in there to give that sharp line. You have to be careful not to do too much of that because it will look, look and feel like a little lump. So it's a very subtle uh, line of filler that will accentuate that. So that's my approach to jawline filler. If you have any questions, send them to us. And let us know what you want to talk about next week. I was thinking cheeks or tear troughs. So we'll have a, a poll up and let us know. Everyone have a great weekend. Bye-bye.